What is the world made of? What is human nature? What is intelligence? These are universal questions that cultures have asked through the ages. Thales and Plato now on the philosophical roots of psychology. The famous memory researcher Hermann Ebbinghaus once said, Psychology has a long past, but only a short history. In this episode, we will explore the importance of Thales and Plato for the development of modern science and psychology. We will see how they represent an important paradigm shift in Western thought. For many Greeks in the 5th and 6th century BC, the answers for many basic questions were supernatural. There was the realm of the gods and the human world. The gods had little concern for mere human mortals. Humans had souls that survived death but had no memories or personality. Some Greeks believed that human souls used to live among the gods, but humans had committed sins. As a punishment, human souls were locked in physical bodies on this earth. Around 600 BC, a shift in the worldview began to happen in Greece. Was this the result of the Greeks coming into contact with other cultures? Thales, considered one of the first philosophers, proposed the world was made of matter and operated by natural principles and not the whims of the gods. Contrary to religious dogma, he offered these ideas as proposals, open to criticism. Thus, Greek materialism and the critical tradition begins. Why is Thales important to psychology? In research, psychology assumes materialism. That is, the universe is composed only of physical and natural material. Also, psychology assumes that theories should be open to critical analysis. Thales and some later Greek philosophers represent what Thomas Kuhn calls a paradigm shift. A paradigm is a network of beliefs, value assumptions, observational techniques, and thinking strategies that are shared by community or society. The Greek philosophers reflect a paradigm shift from supernaturalism to materialism to naturalism. They also reflect a shift from dogmatism to critical analysis. These shifts become the basis for modern science and psychology. 200 years later, Plato proposes a new worldview which includes rudimentary theories of intelligence and personality. He proposes that intelligence is reflected in different levels of thought, with some levels more sophisticated than others. Plato said that imagining is the lowest level. Holding beliefs reflects higher intelligence. Thinking, especially mathematical thought, reflects even greater intelligence. But the highest level of intelligence involves knowing the world of forms. Everything in the material world is a reflection of a pure form. For example, there are many kinds of love, but each individual instance of love is an inferior copy of the pure form of love. This is true of everything people have names or words for. The love we experience is a result of interaction of the pure form and our bodily existence. So the highest level of intelligence is contemplating the pure forms. This realm of forms is the true nature of things and not the material world proposed by Thales. Plato also proposed one of the earliest Western theories of personality. He uses the word soul instead of self. Nonetheless, we are all composed of three aspects. The rational, the courageous or spirit, and the appetitive. These three aspects of the soul or self are in conflict. The rational is the noblest component and is immortal. The courageous is our emotional dimension. The appetitive is what motivates us to satisfy needs. According to Plato, the rational component should control the courageous and the appetitive dimensions. In a somewhat similar fashion, Freud proposed that the ego should manage the conflict between the id and the superego. 
in regard to intelligence and character. Nativism is the belief that we are born with characteristics or qualities not learned through experience. Plato believed that we are born with knowledge of the forms and born with innate differences in personality. We see more modern versions of nativism in Francis Galton's theory of intelligence in the late 1800s and the genetic theories of intelligence which are current today. The research on introversion and extroversion suggests an innate dimension to this personality trait. Plato was also a rationalist. This means that he placed great importance on reason and logic as the pathway to intelligence. Our modern IQ test also focuses on analytical intelligence. He also believed that sensory experience can be deceiving. Today we know that optical illusions can manipulate our sensory experience in fascinating ways. What is Plato's legacy for psychology? Since science and psychology depend on both observation and the analysis, Plato's distrust of sensory experience slowed the development of science. Plato's dualism of body versus immortal soul is expressed today in Christian theology. This dualism also leads to the question of whether mental processes and brain processes are the same or different. Finally, Plato's conflict theory of personality reemerges in a different form in Freudian psychology. Although Plato lived over 2,000 years ago, his views have continued to influence Western thought and modern psychology.